Hello everyone, um, you've probably woken up to news that London is being seriously um, locked down and schools are closing at the end of the week. Right now it's Thursday the 19th of March. Um, our family's actually been on lockdown for three days, this is day three, because um, my daughter developed a persistent cough on Sunday and on Monday the advice was to self-isolate as a family, which we've done. And it's a bit annoying. Um, we've had made fun of it as well, but you know, it's very disruptive. And so um, I've seen a few people today posting things, you know, I've got a bit of a cough, do I have to self-isolate? Is it that serious? Um, I did some numbers last night and I hesitated to post this because they're a bit scary, but um, I think it's worth, um, I'm not trying to be alarmist, but a very simple mathematical model shows why this is so important. Um, the UK hasn't done widespread testing. Uh, we haven't tested you know like on the on the scale of other countries um, so really the the best data we've got comes from the death rate we do know pretty much who's died of the coronavirus and as of today the number is 104 uh, as I say this is Thursday the 19th of March um, there's a few assumptions that the mathematical model makes and um, I think these are accurate based on um, what I've read from the UK government sources um, a few assumptions. First of all is that about 1% of people who contract coronavirus will die. Um, 1%. Normally the most vulnerable underlying health conditions, but that number seems to be holding true um, once you know all the cases across the world, 1% is a fair assumption. Second thing is that without intervention, about uh, it takes about six days to double. So the number of cases double roughly every six days. And that is a, you know, you've seen it, an exponential curve where it gets high fast and that's really the key to all of this um, the other thing is that the death rate the time sorry the time it takes to die from it um, is about 18 days it's about four days from the moment of infection until you first develop symptoms on average and then it's about 14 days on average from the time you develop symptoms to if you're going to be one of the unfortunate uh, one percent then it takes about 14 days from the first symptoms on average to die um, one other thing that's important to know is that about 5% of people who catch it will need serious medical care. So five times more people than the people who, who die, it's five times greater will need medical attention urgently. Um, so what does that tell us? Well actually that tells us a lot. So if it takes 18 days to die from coronavirus and today 104 people have died from it, then we can look back 18 days and figure out how many people had it if 1% of them have died. So if we look back 18 days and we say that, okay, well, 1% of the people who had it have died now, um, therefore, however, that, that 100 people 18 days ago, that's 1% of the total who had it. So 18 days ago, it's not unfair to assume that 10,000 people in the UK had it. 1% of them have now died, that's that 104. So if the, thing, the thing about it is, if it doubles every six days, then in the last 18 days, it's been able to double three times over. So if 18 days ago, 10,000 people had it, and I think that's a fair assumption, then six days later, 20,000 people had it. And six days after that, 40,000 people had it. And now, 18 days later, I don't think it's an unfair assumption that 80,000 people in the UK have coronavirus. Now that means two things. First of all, it means that 800 people are ultimately gonna die from it if this model holds up. It means that 4,000 people are going to require urgent medical attention and that's on top of the, you know, what's currently happening in the NHS, whatever, the usual capacity. Um, and I don't know what the numbers are, but I, from what I saw from the government figures, it's, I think it's fair to assume there's something like 6,000 um, extra beds. So we're, we're already, as of today, if these assumptions are correct, pushing the limits of what our health service can deal with. But of course, the problem is that in six days, that number will have doubled. And in another six days, if we don't self-isolate, it will double again. So by the end of March, which is 12 days from now, on the 31st of March, we're looking at potentially, in the UK, 300,000 cases and 3,000 deaths and 15,000 people needing urgent medical care. And we don't have that capacity. But of course, that's that's just in 12 days time. The problem comes if it carries on again, doubling in every six days. By the end of March, the, num the numbers of people who have it are in the millions. Um, and our health service is completely overwhelmed. What this tells us is that the time to act is absolutely now. It's so important that you self-isolate now. Not, 
because we're all going to die, but because our health service is at the point where if we don't stop the, that six day doubling, it will get out of control really fast. And that's why the government is saying, don't, you know, cut down all our inessential movement. They're shutting the schools. They try not to panic people, and I think that's important, but it's, don't also take it as, is this really overblown? It's not. We're all in it together. We have to slow that rate of infection. We have to stop it being doubling in six days. Because if we can get a control of that, and if we can stop spreading it, then actually we can dodge this bullet. But it is coming and it is serious. So yeah, if, you, if you're in two minds about whether to, to, to self-isolate, you absolutely have to. Cheers.